Hey everybody, welcome to mini beginner's crash course to Elasticsearch and Kavana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. This is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episode five, we talked about how you can run Elasticsearch and Kibana using the Elastic Cloud. In today's episode, we'll cover how you can perform CRUD operations. In other words, how to create, read, update, and delete documents in Elasticsearch. So before we get started, I want you to save this link shown on the screen. So this is a go-to link for all the resources I'll share with you this season. For this episode, I'll be referring to a GitHub repo to show you how you can perform CRUD operations in Elasticsearch. So to get to this repo, go to the link on the screen. You could also access the link in the description of the video. Once you're there, click on part one. Then scroll down to performing CRUD operations section. Then pull up DevTools in a separate window and arrange the repo and DevTools side by side. Okay, so your screen should look like this. We have two windows open side by side. On the left, we have the DevTools open. This is also referred to as a Kibana console. And on the right, we have part one repo open and we've scrolled down to the performing CRUD operations section. Okay, so let's go to the window where we have the Kibana console open. And this is divided into two panels. On the left is where we enter the request we wanna to send to Elasticsearch. And on the right is where we'll see the response from Elasticsearch. So in this episode, we're gonna learn about requests you could send to perform CRUD operations. In other words, how do we create, read, update, and delete a document? And for this exercise, we're going to store documents about our favorite candy. So if you've watched previous episodes, you know that documents are logically grouped into an index. And as a best practice, we're going to create an index first. So to create an index, we use a HTTP verb put followed by name of the index. And since we're indexing documents about our favorite candy, in our example, we'll name our index favorite underscore candy. So let's copy and paste this entire request here into the console. Make sure to select it. There's a gray bar over it and click on this green arrow to send the request. Now you'll see a 200 success message. And when you see acknowledge true, it means that the index favorite candy has been successfully created. Okay, so now that we have an index, let's index some documents. And this time I'm using index as a verb to mean that we're storing documents in Elasticsearch. So let's scroll down to index a document section. Now this is C, the create part of CRUD operation. And when you're indexing a document, both HTTP verbs, post or put can be used. And you would use post if you want Elasticsearch to auto-generate an ID for your document. And the syntax you follow is post followed by name of the index, then the document endpoint, followed by a JSON object with whatever data that you want to store in Elasticsearch. So in our example, we're saying post in favorite candy index, the following document, which contains the fields, first name and candy. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send and you'll get a 201 success message saying that in the index favorite candy, a document with an auto-generated ID has been created. Okay, so earlier we said when indexing a document, both HTTP verbs, post or put can be used. We just went over post, so let's go over when you would use put to index a document. So scroll down to put. Now you would use put if you want to assign a specific ID to your document. And a time where you might want to use this is when you're indexing data with a natural identifier. For example, let's say you're indexing patient data where each patient has a unique ID. 
And document may be easier to work with if it had the same ID as the patient ID rather than an auto-generated ID that has no meaning because it's easier to keep everything uniform across multiple data sources. So this time, we're going to index a couple more documents using put. And if you look at the repo, you'll see that the syntax is put followed by name of the index, the document endpoint, an ID that you want to assign to this document, followed by a JSON object with whatever data that you want to uh, index into Elasticsearch. So in our example, we're saying put in favorite candy index the following document and assign this an ID of one. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. And you'll see a 201 success message saying that in favorite candy index document one has been created. Now note this version field here and it's set to one. Uh, we'll go over what that is in a bit. Okay, so let's index a couple, couple more documents and I'm going to copy the request that we just sent and paste it twice below. Now, let's say Rachel's favorite candy is Rolo and I'm going to give this a document ID of two and send the request. And you'll see that document two has been created. And we'll do one more. We'll say Tom's favorite candy is Kit Kat. And we'll give this document an ID of three. All right. And you'll see that document three has been created here as well. Okay, so now that we have indexed some documents, I want to send a request to see the content of the document that has been indexed. So this is the read part of your CRUD operations. So let's scroll down to read. Now, the syntax that we're going to use is get followed by name of the index, the document endpoint, and ID of the document that you want to retrieve. So in our example, we're saying get from favorite candy index document with an ID of one. So let's copy and paste that below the request for document one here. Make sure to select and send. And you'll see that document one has been retrieved and under source, you'll see the information that we index earlier. So get request is a great way to check whether our CRUD operations have worked or not. Now, what do you think would happen if we accidentally index another document with an existing ID? Well, let's find out. So go back to the request where we index a document with an ID of one. And I'm going to copy this request and paste it below. So let's say Sally's favorite candy is Snickers but we accidentally forgot to update the document ID here and we're using the existing ID of one. So let's copy and select. Let's select this request and send. Now this is a little different now. So you get a 200 success message instead of 201 and you'll see that document one has been updated and the version number is now two. So what this is telling you is the number of times a document has been either newly indexed, updated, or deleted. So far, document with an ID of one has been created with John's info. Then we accidentally updated it with Sally's info. So the version number is now two. Okay, so just to double check, let's send a get request to see the content of document one. So we're going to go back to this get request we sent earlier, select it and send. Now, if you look under source, it no longer contains John's information, but it contains Sally's information. And this isn't good because when you're indexing your data, you don't want to accidentally overwrite your existing document. So in order to prevent that, you could use a create endpoint 
So turn to your repo and scroll up to create endpoint section. Now, the syntax you use is put followed by name of the index, then the create endpoint, then the ID that you want to assign to this document. So in our example, what we're saying here is put in favorite candy index the following document and assign it an ID of one. But if the ID already exists, then don't do anything. Just throw an error. So let's copy and paste this request into the console and we'll put it under the get request here. Make sure to select and send. And you'll see a 409 error stating the reason as document already exists. So this is exactly how the create endpoint uh, is supposed to work. So it provides a safeguard for you so you don't accidentally overwrite your document. Okay, now let's scroll down to update. So there will be times where when you will want to update an existing document. For example, let's say Sally originally liked Snickers, but she changed her mind. Her favorite candy now is M&Ms. So let's go to our repo and the syntax you would use for that is post followed by name of the index, then update endpoint, then the ID of the document you want to update. Now, make sure to add the doc here as a context because what this is telling you is to only update the field specified in the inner brackets here. So in our example, what we're saying is post in favorite candy index, I want you to update document one, but please note that I only want to update the field candy with M&Ms. So let's copy and paste that under the request that we sent for Sally's information. Make sure to select and send, and you'll see that document one has been updated and the version number is now three. And this makes sense because we initially created document one with John's information. Then we accidentally updated it with Sally's information. Then we intentionally updated Sally's information and updated the field candy with M&Ms. So the version number is now three. Okay, so let's just make sure document one has been correctly updated. So we're gonna send this get request here uh, for document one and send. Now you'll see that Sally's favorite candy now has been updated to M&Ms. Okay, last but not least, what if we want to delete a document? And this one is super simple. So let's scroll down to the delete section here. And the syntax you're going to use is delete followed by name of the index, the document endpoint, then ID of the document you want to delete. So in our example, we're saying delete from favorite candy index document with an ID of one. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. And you'll see that document one has been deleted and the version number now is four. So let's just double check and make sure that we deleted document one. So we're going to send a get request for document one and send it. And you'll see a 404 error because document one no longer exists. All right, so we just covered how to perform CRUD operations with Elasticsearch and Kibana. And this content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch Part 1. So Part 1 is a full-length workshop where I cover the use cases of the Elasticsearch, the basic architecture of Elasticsearch, and how to set up and run Elasticsearch and Kibana. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link shown on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana.